Hey, welcome. My name is Lars. I'm going to try and teach you how to make uh, web applications where you pretty much just write JavaScript from the very top to the very bottom of uh, an application of what we call a full stack application. So the goal is to make web applications and uh, we're going to use HTML, CSS and JavaScript. Now, I want you guys to have a basic understanding of this before you get started with my course. So I'm going to point you at some areas where you can do some courses just to get up to speed with the basic of those three languages. Then we're going to talk about the mean full stack and what that's all about. Now the mean full stack is pretty much a full JavaScript stack that you can use when you want to write an entire full featured web application from all the way down to the database, which in our case is going to be a Mongo database and all the way up to some front end that you can present to the user, which is going to be written in AngularJS. So very quickly, what does the letter stand for? Well, the MS Mongo, which I just said, the Mongo database is a document based database. I'll tell you what that is about later. The Express, that's a way for us to utilize methods. So we get requests and responses back and forth between a browser and a server. That's pretty much how the internet works. Now this guy is good at taking those informations and putting them into something we can then use. So it kind of structures them for us. We'll get into what it is. AngularJS is a way for us to make HTML shine and, and add some extra functionality to our web pages. So it's a way for us to say we'll write JavaScript and it'll convert it into HTML with some JavaScript inside it. So we make dynamic front ends in our web pages. Really, really powerful stuff. Then we use Node.js as the runtime to run all, all of this. Now, why do that? Well, that's also JavaScript that we'll write there. It's actually running on the Chrome's V8 JavaScript engine. And I'll explain what that is later. So we're going to try and I'm going to try and explain to you how data actually are is transferred from your client, which is the browser in our case, all the way to the server and back again. We're going to go into all of this and try to understand how a real web page actually works. And then we're going to try and make our own. Then we're going to build it ourselves. And we're going to populate it. We'll be using the following things. We'll be using something called JSON, so you'll have to learn that. That's a data structure. We'll, we'll be talking about Bower, Grand Yeoman, so many other tools in that area. It's, we are going to use something called NPM to use all of these great tools. We are going to use Atom as our IDE and also we're going to use RoboMongo. Actually, I think I'm going to change that because RoboMongo is struggling a bit right now, but we're going to use some kind of way to look into our database so we don't have to write commands all the time. Then we're going to use OpenShift to actually provide a solution in the cloud. So you can start showing it to your friends, family, whatever you want. It's up there in the cloud, right? So you don't only have a local machine running environment, blah, blah, blah. You actually have something you can present to people with prototypes, whatever you want to do. And then we're going to use Angular full stack that um, a user called Daftmonk created. It's so powerful. You can write single commands and then you'll actually have a full featured web application. We're going to use that to get started and to get something going as fast as possible. So what else are we going to talk about? Well, relational databases are out there and they've been used for so long, but I want to dive into how to use a Mongo instead. So we're going to touch in on what's the difference between a Mongo and a relational database, pros and cons, and how can we use them? because we're going to use the Mongo database here. So I have to explain to you what's the differences. Then we have sockets. We're going to try and make some real time communication on our server. So if I write a message, I want everybody to be notified maybe. That's what real time socket communication is all about. So we're going to try and use something called socket IO to actually do that. If you find the time, I'm going to show you Yonic. It'll be one of the last courses, but I want to make JavaScript phone development so that you can do that as well if you want to later on. And then maybe we'll touch game development. If you guys like the courses, we'll evolve on it and add some game development in there. But it'll be for later courses if, if we wanna move on. That's pretty much it. See you next time. Have fun.